Let's see, are there any adjustments at all to the agenda for tonight? Yeah, I've got one. Um, okay. Uh, Chance has to get to the Callis Select Board meeting. I was wondering right. if it was okay to move him up to before the town clerk's report just so he can get on to the next meeting. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. okay. Nope. Uh, any public comment? No. Nope. Okay. Um, so I didn't get a chance to look at the bills. Um, Brian and Paul, did you guys get a chance to look at them? I did. I did. You both did? No, nope, not me. Okay. So I guess um, we can't really approve the bills if only okay. one of us. So uh, I'll, I'll be definitely getting down there tomorrow morning to go through them. And I guess our signatures on the warrants will be the approval. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So um, <clears throat> do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the um, December 23rd, December 11th and December 14th um, select board meetings? Yes, I'll move that. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. So, th and those are all down at the town office to be signed also. So, um, Chance, we're up, you're up next. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so uh, just a couple of things real quick. I, I sent uh, to you, Mike, the budget for the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, and we're basically looking at a 3.6% increase for Woodbury, which took it from $71,681.84 to $74,296.89. Overall budget increased 2.6%. Did you get it? Did Did you get that out to all the select board members so they could you know, all look at um, it? I don't think I've even come across it yet, so I, I didn't send it on to anyone. No. Nope. Okay. Up on mine. <laughs> Do you want me to? You want me to resend it to you, Michael, or you want me to send it to all all three of you just so you guys all have it moving down the road? Uh, do you have all three of our email addresses? Yes, sir. Okay, my, better send it to all three. Okay, I'll yeah, do that. That way to make sure that they get it too. Right, right. Yep. If, you wanted, if you wanted to send it to me right now, I could try to screen share it. Well, if you, uh, actually, if you, allow me to, if you allow me to screen share, I can share it for you right okay, here. Okay, um, uh, we can make you a co-host. Sure. Uh, let's see, um, hang on a second. So, um, okay, it's not allowing me to do that. Hang on, just see. Um, Leif, if you're there, could you um, make Chance a, a co-host? I can't seem to do it on my end. Mike, hold on, I'll just, I'll just, I'll send it right to you and then you can share it yourself. Okay. Yeah, try to keep this as simple as possible. So send it, send it to WSB M. Gray. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Is that not what your regular email address is? That's not my usual. Okay. Hold on. Let okay, me. Okay. Chance is a co-host. Okay. Chance, you are a co-host. Okay. Let me get back to the right thing here. And share screen. Yep. It's allowing me to share a screen. Everybody see that now? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay, I'll scroll down a little bit. Scroll down a little bit here just so people can see more of the bottom than the top. That's just the numbers as far as uh, what everybody would be expected to pay. And here's the expenses. We had a couple increases that were obviously out of our control, you know, the insurance and dispatching and stuff like that. It's, it just is what it is. We, we can't do anything about it. There's no negotiations on our part. Right. Um, so we, we cut as much as we could out of uh, firefighting equipment, which means, you know, one less set of gear this year versus, you know, the three we normally buy to replace. We're just going to do two. 
Uh, you know, so we trimmed where we could to try to make up for the differences, to try to keep it level with Corona and everything else going on. Uh, I myself as a taxpayer can certainly understand the struggle. Um, so this is this is what we came up with. Is any any questions that you see right out glaring at you that you'd like to address? I don't see anything myself right off as a first look. I think that the town will appreciate you guys taking the time to try to limit as much as you could. Chance, will you scroll down back down to the bottom, please? Sure. The, the recruitment and retention fund. Yep. That went up almost $4,000. Can you explain why? Uh, well, we're, we're running a lot of calls. It's 120 calls. Uh, that includes the $10 stipend for members per call. Uh, oh, and okay. as, as we respond to more and more calls, that's going to be more and more money. Okay, I was thinking it was for recruiting more members. Well, well, we do use it to recruit as well. You know, any anytime we have to uh, print a poster or a paper or anything like that to try to uh, bolster uh, something. Just, oh, never mind. That wasn't me. I just, something just came up on the screen there, and it's got nothing to do with me. It's just because I'm a co-host. But yeah, so that's that's where the rec recruitment and retention. Most of that is, um, you know, the the stipends for the stipends for the employ uh, for the firefighters. However, okay. we have whatever we can do to try to, we've only gained one person this year, so. Uh, All right. Which is probably, uh, you know, one better than last year. So last year, I think we gained one and we lost that person by the end of the year. So <clears throat> retention party working while we're recruiting though. Okay. And what about the dispatch payment for $2,500? I know you haven't of, had that in previous years. No, we have not. That's part of the simulcast system where they're up, updating the uh, they're updating the antennas into a simulcast system, so you can actually talk from you know your portables. Because that's one of the problems we run into on a regular basis is we can talk and I can talk to Paul, you know, on the other end of Woodbury, but I can't talk to Capital West down in Montpelier. Um, so this is supposed to improve the new antennas are supposed to improve this system. Uh, so when you get the new antennas, does that cost go away, or do we that, still that, have that a cost along with the twenty four thousand? That is a cost for a period of time to pay for the upgrades. So yeah, that would be that would be ten years, Robin. What the the mutual aid system is replacing all the radio equipment on our nine transmitter sites throughout the mutual aid system. Uh, okay. The majority of that equipment is about thirty to thirty five years old. Um, so it's it really desperately in need of replacement. So it's a the project system wide is 350 odd some thousand dollars. In Woodbury's total portion over 10 years is 25,000 of that, which includes okay. replacing the equipment on our tower um, up okay. at the quarry. So it's actually a pretty good deal. It's just uh, it's been a long time coming. We've been working on the project on the, not this is again not the fire department side but the mutual aid side for about ten years. Okay. So what we're working on now is getting approval from all the towns. Um, there's 19 uh, entities that have to participate. So once that's done, then hopefully the project can move forward next summer. Okay. Yeah. The other part of that cost, Robin, too, is once they update the antennas, they have to come and update all our radios and our trucks and our programming. Wise. And that's all, the programming is all included in that cost. Okay. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. I, I also that's sit on the question. <laughs> Capital West Dispatch Committee, just so everyone knows. So that's why I'm familiar with what's going on at that level. Okay. Is it is there any way that you can tie the town trucks into that same upgrade you're doing on the tower? It's Corey. They probably no, because the the only one frequency on that, and it's a regulated for fire and emergency only frequency. Okay, because we need to do something with the radios for the town truck still. To get a repeater, so if that's something you and I can talk about, Chuck, because like we can talk about that. I got some radio people and some ideas for that. Yeah, I've talked to Paul. Uh, not Paul. Uh, Joe, Radio Joe, uh, and. Uh, Greg and I have done some research on it too, and yeah, we definitely need to talk about it because there's too many too many dead spaces for these trucks. 
yeah, yeah smoke we, smoke signals just don't work anymore yeah we're in the same no. bat batch with the fire department <laughs> yeah yeah building a fire under the truck to get a smoke signal out is not <laughs> correct <right. laughs> okay any I, other questions on the budget diana i have one um you're, you, there's going to be a separate amount for your truck fund right yes there always is and do you put those in the same article did you do that last year uh no we've been working on combining everything together uh this year i, I, I believe we did chance last year the truck the truck replacement fund and the capital fund i believe were on the budget last year in our budget well, I could always look and see. Yeah, I was yeah. say I'd have to look to double check. I'd have to look yeah. to be sure. We, we, we've be, been trying uh, to pull this all together with both towns to make it a little easier. Actually, it was. There was only two articles we did last year, I believe. Was last year the first time that um, the fire department um, you know, requested from the town to start that uh, truck replacement fund? Was that the first year or was that the second yeah. year? It was the second year and it was the capital replacement fund. The truck replacement fund is the one that's going to kick off in three years once we're done paying. Okay. Right. Okay. The capital Thank replacement, you. this was the second year. Last year was the second year. Okay, yeah. good. Thank, thanks for clearing so there, up my memory. So yep. there were two articles last year, 17850 for the truck replacement fund and then the 102682 for the uh, operations. Yep. Right. Yep. The capital replacement was part of the budget. Part and I'll be getting those uh, from you, Chance, in the near future. Uh, actually, yeah, I sent I sent them uh, to Mike for this meeting, but uh, I will be sending them out tomorrow to both towns uh, after I get done dealing with both town select boards tonight. So, yep. Alrighty. And is there a chance you will get any reimbursement for the pandemic supplies? Probably not. Okay. The pandemic supply reimbursement is a ridiculous uh, process to go through. And the volunteers right now are still on the bottom of the barrel with everything. Okay. Um, so the, the limited amount of repayment uh, is probably not worth the squeeze that it would take and the amount of grant paperwork we'd have to fill out. Um, okay. I, I'm, still, I'm still watching it because I am part of the SEOC uh, in my state job during the day. So I'm still watching to see what's going to come of that. But okay. it requires somebody to spend a lot of hours doing paperwork. And uh, I'm not sure who has that kind of time anymore. Thank you. Sure. So if the capital replacement fund is not part of the truck replacement fund, what does the capital fund do? The capital replacement fund is actually, uh, it's actually replacing the truck replacement fund. That's why the truck replacement oh. fund is going to be going away here in a couple of years. But the truck replacement fund was, we, we'd look for a truck and then we'd have to come and wait until March and ask to borrow some money so we could buy a truck that probably isn't sitting around waiting for us with the money. So the capital replacement idea was to put the money in a pot so we could actually stop paying all these ridiculous amounts of interest and have the money available when the trucks are actually available. And there's more to capital replacement than just trucks. You know, you, you have to spend over oh, $100,000 yeah, yeah. to replace your SCBA. Which we, yeah, so it, it, was, it was to replace the truck replacement as well. Okay. And I hope the slap boys listen to this. Oh, yeah, we've heard it before. Yeah, we're, we're, we're putting money in the, we did last year and we're going to this year's uh, same idea, Chuck. Okay. The idea is we want to get to a cash basis on vehicles. Yeah, we're right. trying to get there with the, with the town highway trucks too. I'm just trying to put a needle in there and make sure. You got it. Okay. <laughs> the needle's there already a... there. You can back, when, back when this first started, Chuck, two years ago, one of the reasons that really speared this was we were looking at the interest that we paid on a fire truck. Exactly. And if we bought two fire trucks, we could have bought a third with the interest. Yes. Yes. So, so that's what steered this original. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> it's now, is there, a cap, money. is there a cap that you can put into that fund? What do you mean? Let's say, like, I don't know, a million dollars. And then when you hit that sum of money, you can't go over that until you buy something. 
or it's just an account that you can just keep building forever in a day? It's, if it's, a, it's a bank account down at the Union Bank, just like the rest of them. We're going to keep putting money in. I mean, we've already bought one truck. We have to replace the SCBA next. Uh, we spent, uh, what was it, $14,000 last year on replacing the bottles for the SCBA because we couldn't carry them in the trucks anymore. They had DOT regulations uh, caught up with us eventually there. Uh, yeah. We, we didn't get fined or anything, but we were at the end of the, the, regula the regulatory period. So our next purchase will have to be the uh, SCBA, and then we'll be working on replacing, you know, whatever whatever the next truck in the process is. So no, there's there's no cap. We could keep putting okay. money in there, but it's not going to happen. I mean, we're going to spend the money as we get it um, okay. to replace the trucks. You know, and that's where some of these savings are being seen in the budget is the lack of replacement. Now that we have two newer trucks that replace three 20 plus year old trucks. Uh, the maintenance cost has gone down substantially too. That was the big, the big decrease last year, which resulted in a negative, uh, okay, a negative increase or a decrease in our budget last year. So, so it looks like last year the, the hundred and two thousand included the capital replacement fund. Yep. Yeah. So the page you submitted, Chance, shows the three articles that we separated the 817, whatever it is, 17850 and the funding article. And then we've got the petition you've got too. Correct. This year, this year's will have three articles, but the third one is the is the petition. We we still submitted this year with the capital under the budget, correct, Paul? Yes, that's correct. And the truck replacement fund is its own article. Well, and we wanted to keep that one separate because in a couple of years, that one's going to disappear and it'll just be gone. Right. And I didn't want people to think it was forgotten about and we we're stuck sticking it away in our, uh, in our budget and hiding it from anybody. It's, it's legit. Uh, when those loans are paid off, that, that will disappear. So. Any other questions for the budget? I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. I will stop sharing and uh, you can yeah, have I'm your good. screen back, Mike. Okay. Thank you, Chance. Sure. You gonna, did you uh, did you show the petition, Chance? Uh no. Do why you want to why, why don't you talk briefly about that? That's probably be kind of new to anybody who's yep. Yep, so what, what I have here, and I'll be submitting this to you tomorrow, Diana, as well. I'll bring it in person so you have the original. Uh, we, we at the fire department uh, have been working with a building committee uh, for a year plus, minus COVID, of course. And uh, the architectural plans came up with a building. It's about 4,000 square feet, which obviously is uh, considerably smaller than the last one. Uh, the budget for this one is 1.2 million. Again, considerably smaller than the last one. Um, so we went out and uh, pursuant to 17 VSA 2643A, we gathered signatures uh, to add an article to the uh, annual meeting this year. And the article would read as, shall the town appropriate up to $85,000 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated for the purpose of financing the cost of construction of a new fire and emergency operations center at a total cost of $1.2 million. Um, we were able to get uh, 73 signatures. One of them I know is no good. They're not a citizen. So it's really only 72, but they were, they were pretty excited about signing the petition. So I just let them and then I, I marked beside it with a little X knowing that they would be uh, not counted. Um, so we, we will be putting up on our webpage. I didn't want to spring it until we'd talk to you guys tonight. Of course, uh, we're going to be putting it on our Facebook page. Uh, we're going to be putting it on our, our fire department website. Uh, I'll send it, of course, to Gary. Gary posts just about everything we post, um, which will put uh, the, the drawings and the opinion of probable cost out there for people to look at. Um, the intention because of COVID uh, and past experience was that uh, I have my own Zoom account and um, 
I'm gonna to offer to have meetings of 10 to 15 people. If people would like to have a session and talk about the numbers or talk about the plans, uh, then we'll get folks together in groups of 10 to 15 people so they can do that. Um, and that, that information will be on the uh, website as well. Um, the other addition to our website is also going to kick off tomorrow as well, which is the fundraising. Um, in an ideal world, we'd have been doing fundraising all year. Uh, COVID kind of put the boots to that. <clears throat> so we're, we're pushing forward with our brick campaign, which is uh, buying a brick, you know, in, in memoriam of a loved one or however you want to put it. Um, it's obviously the fire department, so we're not political, so we don't get into politics and all those political things, but people can go into this site and buy a brick and they, the bricks are specified at a dollar amount based on the size. Um, they pay the amount of dollars for the brick. And then when it comes time, we get all the bricks and we build a brick memorial garden on the new property. And uh, obviously we get a bunch of money out of the donations, hopefully. Um, so that, and that's why the article read up to 85,000 was because if we were to do the, the complete $1.2 million on a construction loan and then convert it to a bond, um, it would be a little less than 85,000 a year, but putting the up to allows us to uh, drop that number down to whatever the final number is after, after the construction's done and after the fundraising efforts are completed. Go ahead, Diana. Um, I just wonder if there's going to be, I'm sure you've put a lot of thought into this and checked out all the legalities and everything. I'm just concerned about the people who aren't going to pay attention or have access to the, the uh, facts until they see the ballot. Is there any way, you, have you thought about putting in the article how many years this $85,000 is going to add, how many years it's going to go on? I mean, you're talking 10, 15 years? Uh, construction bonds, I believe, are 20. Yeah. Hmm. Paul, do you know the exact answer? You're, you're muted, Paul. Everybody likes that better. Um, 20 years. <laughs> okay, that's what, that's what I thought. I just wanted to verify. I'm still working on getting that coffee cup that says you are muted. So <laughs> I will buy one soon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's a 20-year construction bond. So it won't be eighty-five thousand dollars for twenty years. Yes, it would. Whatever, really? whatever, oh well, whatever the dollar amount, uh, the loan amount comes to. That would be if it, if it's if it comes under a million dollars and it's seventy-two thousand, then that's what the the loan amount would be, every year for those twenty years, um, and that's why we did up to eighty-five, knowing that that's the full boat ride. Um, and hopefully by the time we get done, we'll be far under that with the fundraising effort. So um, the first year would be up to 85,000. The second year, we'd actually have an exact price because we'd know exactly what the price is gonna be moving forward every year. But you, won't, that, you won't have to come back every year with an article. Of course I will. Really? Yes, I am not what the town. I am a nonprofit organization and I cannot ask the town to commit to future town meetings because I'm not a municipal entity. Well, even the town can't commit to that long, but um, I, I have to come back every year. How do you go out and make that, spend that much money and not have a guarantee that you're gonna be able to pay for it? Yeah. That's, between, I mean, that's between the bank and the bond. <laughs> not only that, that I hope that after the 20 years of paying $85,000 a year, that there's some goodness left in the building and you're not gonna be looking for another building. Well, the one we've got right now is over 50 years old, so I'd like to think we could pull at least that out of it. Yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure that you still can't use the same one you got, but that's not for an argument tonight. <laughs> no, that's that's a that's an argument a whole different night, and I'd be willing to have you come in and squeeze your way down through the truck bays anytime. Believe so, me, I've been there lots of years. So, Chance, what would happen if it gets approved this year, and then let's say a year or two down the road, it doesn't get approved. What's the fire department going to do? The thing that happens every year with our budget, if you don't approve it, we don't have any money. We go out of business. Uh -huh. We don't have a building. But the building will be there, right? And somebody's going to be having to pay for it. Uh, 
No, the bank would repossess it. That's what happens <laughs> okay. when you don't pay your loans. Mm -hmm. okay. We could sell it at a big new Shatney's garage. <laughs> yeah, you could buy you could you could buy it from uh, from the bank. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's the risk we run with this kind of stuff. Same right. thing, you know, if, what, if, what if people don't approve your HERF fund three years from now? Right. What are you going to do with the trucks? You can't pay for them? What, are they, what happens to them? They go back to the bank. Right. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. We have to hope for the good graces of the taxpayers to continue to foot the bill. Mm -hmm. If they don't, we have to back up and punt, just like everybody else. Yeah. And you have figured out what the uh, impact on the tax rate will be, right? I have not. I know Paul had a. Uh, um, what I can, the best I can do is between six and seven cents. Mm -hmm. So Without, in your meetings, you'll let people know that. Yeah, that's the idea. Is that we're going to meet with people and answer these questions. We have answers. It's just we need to get the other one, folks. So any anybody who shows up with a with an article with a petition of more than thirty nine um, signatures has to be approved by the selectmen unless they can unless they decide that it's totally irrelevant. So do they have to vote on it, Chance? Well, we can't really vote on it tonight because it wasn't warned. Sure, it was. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had no idea of this at, at, at this point in time. It's, uh, you know, I, under the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department, you know, I, I, I would have written, um, approved the petition. I didn't, um, and maybe that's my own fault for not seeing the say that, that was part of the paperwork that I sent you, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it at all. So it's not on the, uh, it's not on the agenda, but so, it can be for the next meeting. Well, your next meeting's not until January 11th. All right. So yeah, think, or we could have a special. Um, just go ahead. When I'm preparing the, the warning and stuff, we'll just go ahead and assume that that's going to go. <laughs> if we have to take it off at the last minute, we'll do that. Well, they make markers. We can always scratch it out if we have to. Well, I, I think I think the select board can indicate how whether they would approve it or not at this meeting, but officially um, so that we have a sense of What's going to happen going forward? But um, I was say I don't. I don't need an indication. It's okay. I'll, right. I'll submit it tomorrow to Diana. She'll have it in her possession. And if you guys vote it up, great. If not, mm -hmm. we'll deal with the next step. Yep. That way, you guys aren't talking out of regulation here. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. So, <laughs> well, we can we can each you know give a a yay or a nay or a nod, um, but. but <laughs> But to have it hold up officially, um, it would have I to be. I want to see Brian's nod. <laughs> that, that should be that should be interesting. Oh, there it was. I just saw it. I mean, I I I have no objection to putting it on the warning and let the town residents vote how they how they wish. I don't. I agree with that too. So, like I said, I'll I'll bring it down to Diana tomorrow, and when you guys have your next meeting, you can vote it up or vote yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? What's going on on Angels Road? Oh. It's some, sometimes it's tough to get out for a fire call. My daughter just about blew a gasket a couple weeks ago. Uh, she came down and couldn't get out. Red lights going. No place to go. She had to lay on the horn until somebody came and moved a vehicle. And they're, they're parked down there every day. Yep. Uh, some days well, you can get around, some days you can't. Check in with Paul later on, uh, Chance, because uh, we're going to be discussing that later tonight, and there there is a, a plan in place. Yep. I figured there would be. Yeah. It, it'll get old eventually. Yeah, I had the state police up there last night to clean out three of the cars, and they got rid of them before the cops got there. Oh, really? Yep. Nice. Yeah. They must have a scanner. Call their own people. Call a record. They said, yeah, to the dispatcher. Said they must have a scanner because they moved the cars after I called it in. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, let's Call talk about this later. That works. Okay. So, Mike, I'm at the Secretary of State's office just looking at petitions. 
And what it's telling me is that it says that any petition, once it's verified, must be placed on the article if it's for town meeting or or must have a meeting scheduled to vote on it within 60 days. So there is no approval process for the select board. Okay, all right. The select board could put this on at our own will without a petition, but if we don't do that, then the petition bypasses the board and requires okay. the vote. Okay. That's from Secretary of State's office. Well, that, that's that's the word right there. For yeah, that, I've been. Okay. okay, so so you're good. I'll back to the original plan. I'll drop it off tomorrow to Diana. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions? Nope. All right. I'll get out of your hair. Thanks a lot, folks. Thank you for moving me up. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks. Janet. Off to another meeting. Have a good night. Good fun at the next Thanks. one. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess we're up. Town clerk is report is up next, Diana. Okay, well, we're moving along with preparations for learning about the uh, upcoming town meeting and preparing the uh, information for the report. Um, a, of, a bunch of things that have to be done by the treasurer. There's a bunch of... Uh, uh, the fire department, they always know how to get their information in there. The food shelf, I think we already have their letter. Uh, planning commission, I'm sure we'll get something about from them. Uh, the library, they're working on their report. I might not actually already have that. Um, Conservation commission, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, emergency rescue squad, they're always good about getting their report and the solid waste district as well. Uh, school, no school stuff this year. Maybe there'll be a little report from the school board. I don't know. Uh, so I've been trying to contact people. Oh, I just wanted to mention, Michael, did you go to that webinar on last week? Yes, I did. That was awful. What a waste of time. If, if, if people had read all the stuff that's been put out, you wouldn't need to go. Right. <laughs> an hour and a half and listen to that. But anyways, the one thing that came out of it that was good was Will Sinning agreed to, um, to draft up uh, um, a ballot yeah. that we can uh, put our all our articles on to so everybody doesn't have to do this, do it themselves. So we're waiting for that to come out. Um, I've been contacting people who are who want to be on the ballot. Um, moderator, I have his paperwork. Town clerk, uh, one year left on a three-year term. I have her paper. I have paperwork on that. Uh, select board. Uh, there's a three-year term open. Brian hasn't said yes or no. <laughs> well, <I'm right> out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, well, come in and get your paper. What a glutton for punishment. I know. <laughs> uh, Bob. Good deal, Brian. <laughs> um, the list, list your term that's up is Bob Martin. He's running again. Um, we're going to be short two auditors. Uh, the delinquent tax collector is running again. Uh, we're short two uh, cemetery commissioners. Unfortunately, Richard Patton has decided not to run. So that's going to be a big hole to fill. And, and um, Nanette Tavakelian, her term expired 2023 and she died. So we have two there. The library, they've done a pretty good job of filling their slate. Uh, the two, the grand juror and town law agent positions have actually been eliminated. It does look like we're going to need uh, uh, the school director. I heard today from the chairman of the union school board that Kim has indicated he's not going to run again. So I'm still not clear whether that goes on our ballot or whether they're going to have a separate annual meeting. Yeah, that's not going to be on our ballot. All the towns have to vote for that director. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. that's what I, yeah, okay. I hope that's true. Okay. 
I'm pretty sure it's true. I'm, I'm 98% sure it's true. That's what I thought too. Well, I think you're right too, Paul, or Mike. What? I think he's right. That's what I understood, but there's- The whole they, district has to vote. Getting emails from the, from the school board about it, so I don't know. I, yeah, well, <laughs> I won't say anything. It might be, <laughs> I mean, all, all the new changes might not, I don't know, some of them don't take place until July of this year, so. Uh, what else? That, that may be when the vote for the school, the new school board happens after Maybe. three years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at, at July 1st, yeah. sometime before. Mm -hmm. That may be why we haven't heard anything. I mean, I know, Pate, well, Hazen's different, but they they have their own separate annual meeting, but we still elect their uh, representatives at our town meeting. So, although we don't have one up this year, they're both uh, Steve and uh, Chris Casey. Neither one are, are terms are expiring this year. Mm -hmm. so we'll start putting together reports, uh, sending things out on the email blast for let people know, start letting people know what's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any anything else at all? Any questions for Diana? None for me. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Anyone else? Anything else to add, Diana? Oh, I probably will think of something, but <laughs> we'll be here a few more minutes. I'll just yeah, throw we'll... it out. All right. Okay. <laughs> So I guess we could move on to the town treasurer's report. Yep. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So for everybody has their their um, financial report. Ten four. So I plugged in the new numbers since our last budget meeting. Um, uh, Randy, are you talking about the budget worksheet? Well, the the financial statement does have the new numbers in it. Oh, okay. Do you that want we've me to screen on for the budget? Yeah. Do you want me to screen share um, that? You can if you'd like. Um, I'll go over real quick as far as our income for the last two weeks. Okay, I'll get that up while you're doing and then that. We can, I don't know how much you want me to, to how much we're going to get into it. Um, yeah, so well, the, uh, for the, incoming. The budget yep. work comes later, so I could wait if you want. Oh, okay. All right, I'll yep, do that. That's fine. All right. So we ended up getting... Um, $14,760 back on the grants and aid um, for the highway. Um, we also received $264 for records restoration and $726 for land records for recording the last two weeks. Um, delinquencies, I've Ron has taken in $5,200 $55.66. Um, we also had transfers into our checking account from um, the hold harmless payment, which is the current use of $39,200. And we also received a partial payment of $5,790 for the, the um, the virus grant that I had applied for. So we're still um, roughly $3,000 short on that. Um, so I'm anticipating that to come in shortly. Um, I will be finishing up this week um, the town forest grant uh, from the Conservation Commission. Um, and let's see what else. I transferred 10,000 out of the checking and into the money market today. Um, 
I will probably be doing another transfer. Um, there are some last bills that need to get paid um, that are on a calendar year that I'm gonna have to get out um, by the end of the week. Um, so there'll be a small warrant um, to run between now and Thursday. Um, any questions on the balance sheet or financial statement? No. Nope. Nope. I do, I do have to, I created an item line for the planning commission. Um, it's going to be fund number 16 and I transferred the $10,000 that we have voted on um, at town meeting um, for the, for the, um, the town plan construction. Other than that, yeah, questions? I don't have any. I don't have any. So. All righty then. Okay. So moving so, forward. What we'll do is um, let's um, let's do the town highway report. And then there's a couple of, there are a few other town meeting warning agenda items um, that we need to discuss. Yep. And then we'll get into the budget. So probably be another 15 or 20 minutes at the most. Alrighty. So let's move on to the town highway report. Um, and I do have the Ainsworth Road um, troubles listed there. Um, Chuck, if you have anything else that you'd like to share, um, in the report, uh, why don't we do that first, and then we'll we'll um, finish up with the the fun stuff. Well, okay. Well, as far as the interest road, they were told when they I told them they had to move them jeeps and stuff. That yeah. if there was a problem, the record would be called. Okay. State police or anybody else. Well, the issue the issue um, I guess we're going to get right into it. So here we go. Um, okay. The issue with somebody showing up with a wrecker is that people that live in that house now, they're basically living in that house. That's why they're parking in the road again. So it's not so much being in the town right of way. They're actually parking right in the road. I understand um, that. And the issue is that one of, one of the people that live there has a pretty violent history. And to have some guy, the, maybe the guy from Cabot show up with a wrecker without any kind of police escort is asking for trouble. It and, wouldn't be guy from Cabot. Well, I don't know who it would be, but who, if a wrecker showed up there, just the wrecker driver and no kind of police escort, and people were there in the house, there could be a nasty incident that would take place. So when this all happened, when they first started to work on the house last summer, um, you know, I called the state police and they instructed the town uh, through me to not have any town officials um, deal with the situation to call the state police, you know, immediately, and they would come and deal with the situation of cars parked in the road. Um, I talked to the state police again this morning. Um, they're, they're aware of the situation uh, and they're, they're saying the same thing. Brian called and a state police person did come, but so I guess either they got, you know, were aware that the police, police were coming or you know they moved the cars and it's we can't really take a photograph as proof that they were in the road they have to actually be parked in the road for the state police to be able to do anything about it um so i don't really want anybody in town to um you know put them at risk in, in dealing with these with these folks um so i what i'd like to do and i told the state police i would be doing this is that you know, people, other people that live on that road, uh, if any of us drive by and see them parked in the road, you know, we should immediately call the state police. They're aware of the situation and, you know, they would come and address it. You know, sometimes it takes an hour for them to get here, but if there's somebody nearby, it, you know, they might be able to get there sooner. So that's, that's what I've been advised to do in dealing with this situation. Um, so yeah, and I think I we just need to stay on it because it's a real problem. I saw it just the other day before Brian called. There was a couple rigs almost blocking right. the road, and then we've had Chance and Olivia get stuck in there a couple times trying to get the fire calls. 
or ambulance calls and they can't get out of the road. So yeah. we've got to stay on it. We're looking for behavior modification. So if it takes the state police going there 30 times to get them to stop, then that's what we got to do. Right. And I know the person further up the road from Chance has also yeah. complained. So, um, and rightly so. Yeah. So anytime any of us see trucks, cars, whatever parked right in the road, call the state police immediately. And, you know, and that goes for the people that live on the road too, correct? Yes. They yes. can call 229-9191 and report the incident. Exactly. That's the Middlesex Barracks. They're aware of the situation and they you know, have promised to get right on it, not just add it to a list of, you know, hotspots. They'll deal with it. Um, yeah, so, that sounds good. Okay. Right. So I also contacted Ryan McCall. He's the uh, compliance and enforcement officer within the Department of Envi Environmental Conservation. He is going to do a site visit there. Um, I think I forwarded his email on to at least the select board, maybe Diana. Um, yeah. That would not be addressing the parking in the road. Um, it would be would addressing, be, you know, whether there were violation of anything living in that house. And, and he did mention in the email that this, now that it's winter, it's a hard time of year to evict anybody from where they're living. Um, even if they don't have water or sewer or anything? Um, if they don't have sewer, the, the department tends to overlook it. Um, oh, really? Okay. In the winter. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what yeah. he said. Um, not, if the health, not if the health officer gets a complaint of smells. Well. They won't have any smells, though, if they're not putting anything in the ground. Right. Well, we're also in a pretty unusual environment. They're they're not even requiring people to pay their rents right now. So, right. you know, evictions have been halted. So we're in a really tough environment to get anything done with COVID around. So, you know, and, and the issue isn't some, at the moment, the issue is them parking in the road like it's their personal driveway and nobody else actually lives on the road. So if we can address that and try to do some behavior modification, as Paul mentioned, um, and a couple of uh, state police tickets might help with that. Um, yeah, they're uh, active, they're coming out. So that's what we got to do now. Yeah. Right, that's the case. We just got to make sure we call I'll and uh, call. I'll, I'll make sure Chance is aware and Olivia's aware and if the other person on the road, we need to make sure they're aware that- Yeah, make, Diana, make could you calls. contact that person? You, I know that she's I, called you. I did talk with her today and she said they didn't want to uh, come to the meeting but uh, she, the, another thing she mentioned was that they're just going out in the backyard. I mean, they could see from their house, these people going out and urinating in the backyard, even uh -huh. Yeah. I think they could at least get themselves a porta potty or something. Yeah. Well, I know that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> so anything out of, else about that subject? Any other thoughts? I can let uh, Ryan McCall know that. I she was she was happy to. I read her your emails from Ryan, and she was your email with Ryan, and I she was happy to know that it was being worked on. Okay, and what I would request, you know, as as far as dealing with Ryan um, in other situations in town, he has preferred that not everybody contact him. So if people have complaints other than the parking in the road, mm -hmm. um, I would ask that they email or call me and then I will forward those on to Ryan so that, so that he doesn't get bombarded with stuff. I will pass on what you just shared, Diana, from the other neighbor up the road, so. Anything else about the Ainsworth Road for now? Anything else for a town hiring report, um, Chuck? Um, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Uh, Russell Richardson forwarded or sent an email to Diana, and I think maybe she forwarded it to you guys. Yeah, and Diana I, sent it to me, and I forwarded it to you. I okay. also forwarded it to the town garage. I also right. forwarded it to the town garage. Okay, all right. Well, they got it twice. All right. Well, I called Russell Richardson today uh -huh. and yeah. told him that if there was a problem like that, again, to, to call me directly, and I would get it taken care of. Okay. What was the issue? Because I didn't see the email. So um, they said you guys couldn't get up through there with a fire truck. Okay. Um, All right. I think the road crew didn't come out until Sunday morning. Is that true? 
I mean, that's, that's why I, what I understand. Yes. So, and the roads were pretty wet and slippery on Saturday. I know I had, I, with my four wheel drive Subaru, I, I did a loop checking the beaver stuff and <coughs> the roads were pretty slippery. Um, enough so that I uh, wished I hadn't gone down Valley Lake Road um, and didn't go um, up Shardy or Hill afterwards for that same reason. So right. it probably would have been good if they'd gotten out on Saturday and, and that's the little one-ton dump truck was out Saturday afternoon around four or five o'clock because I right. met I think, it. I think okay. salting the salting the pay part of the roads. Yeah, yes. Russell said he, he complained to somebody. But I told Russell not to wait until it was so slippery they couldn't stand it anymore and to let me know and I would get it taken care of. Right, and we I just need to know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, but Saturday was the day it snowed, right? So... He yes. said well, yeah. Saturday, it Saturday, Saturday night. afternoon that he said it was really bad. We had yeah. the mystery snow that said they weren't wasn't coming and then it snowed six inches. That's correct. Yeah, surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise. And the road crew was out early Sunday morning to plow the roads, but it didn't help much Saturday afternoon. Right. And this goes back to that conversation where we're supposed to be doing road maintenance between whatever it is, uh, 5 a.m. and 8 p.m. And, and right. you and, didn't know um, why that didn't happen. <laughs> I'm trying to stay on top of that. I told yes, sir. I would take yep. care of it. Yep. So just so you guys know that if I hear about it, even down here, that I will get somebody on it. Okay. Yep, I believe you. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else for the town highway report, Chuck? Uh, not a lot. Uh, they are getting ready to change the bed chain in the second dump truck. Mm -hmm. It's already been purchased. We purchased it last fall. Um, they're open for a couple of days where they can do it, but they broke off, broke the bolts and the hinge on Greg's truck. Mm -hmm. So that's going to have to take priority. But I'm assuming the way they talk, the way Greg talked today, that before the week's end was out, that would be fixed. And as soon as they had a couple of days, they would be changing that chain. Um, yeah. He said there was a, a few small things. They worked nine hours of overtime on Sunday, but he said it just wouldn't stop. So uh, mm -hmm. what are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but is to my knowledge, other than the deal on Saturday with Russell, things have been going pretty well. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I would care. Yep. I guess the roads are rougher in hell now after this last rain. Keeps uh, thawing out. Yeah, we get thaws and freezes and thaws and freezes. You know, it's right. going back and forth. Nothing and the gonna same thing's going to happen this week. I've had, I've talked to a couple people up there and I reassured them that we had everything in good shape the first of November. Mm -hmm. But when Mother Nature decides to set in, she ain't getting up until she's got her eggs done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the weather hasn't been good to keep in the roads from being bumpy. <laughs> right. Right. So, and I think everybody understands that. They understand mm -hmm. that they were in good shape first November. And I guess that's all I got. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've, we've done the volunteer fire department. So um, let's move on to the town meeting warning agenda items. And um, I know that um, Jack and Paul are here about the town forest trail parking area. So um, let's let's deal with that first of these three items that are on our warning. Um, Can you guys hear me? This is Paul Council. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, let's see. The uh, we want to build a parking area at the trailhead that we just had constructed this past summer. Um, and we're hoping to get a town meeting article in the town report, uh, something to the tune or something that sounds like, uh, shall the town appropriate $5,000 toward the construction of a parking area for trail access in the town forest. Um, we've had about $25,000 worth of work that we've put into our effort between uh, the recreation plan and the actual construction of the trail. Um, and if we can get um, $5,000 from 
tax money towards the the parking area, uh, we'll ask the Meyer Fund for an additional three thousand uh, for the total cost of eight thousand bucks to improve a place where maybe three or four cars can park there on Town Farm Road. So um, wanted to see what you folks had to say about that. I'm going to recuse myself from the discussion because I am a member of the Conservation Commission. Okay. But, uh, uh, Brian yeah. and Paul, you're welcome to um, ask. You know, Jack is here for the sure. Conservation Commission also. So, yeah. Well, to me, that seems like a lot of money for three parking spots. Uh, well, um, it's wet there, and we've had we had Bud Jones come. He came and looked at it twice. Um, because it's wet, he's gonna, he suggested it needed to be dug out and a bunch of, uh, six inch stone put in there and, um, yeah, just made it so it's not a quagmire in the springtime. Well, I just wonder if there isn't something that our subs from the road crew could work on at a lot less expense. Um, you mean peck away at it over, over time? Well, over a short period of time, you know, we could have two guys work a week on it or whatever. If we had material that we could get someplace or, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like we could do it for a lot less money than that. Uh-huh. Well, I'm, I'm totally up for doing it less expensively. Um, I, you know, it, even if the road crew is doing it, um, those machines are being paid for in one form or another. Sure. By the taxpayers, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, um, I don't know. Do you, you, you have that, any thoughts that... on that? Chuck, if you're still there, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I do. I can't imagine hiring somebody else to do it when you've got an excavator sitting right here in town and everybody's paying for it. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. You know, I, we have the equipment. We get, well, all we got to do is get together and decide what we're going to do. And then it needs to be uh, a matter for you folks to go and get the materials paid for. And I think the town would be uh, further ahead sending the road crew with the excavator up there for a day or two and saving the extra that would be coming from the Myers Fund or the taxpayers or whatever. Uh, okay, you, well, well, yeah, I, I guess maybe that's the route we gotta go. We gotta get the money from the Meyer Fund or the Woodbury Fund. We get 3,000 bucks from them and we buy some six inch stone and uh, yeah. some materials and then uh, the road crew does the work. I think well, that's, a, that's a good approach. I do too. So do I. I'm, I'm going to uh, just say something here. Um, right, yeah. so there also, there are three large white pine trees that Bud Jones recommended be cut down. We would probably have to hire somebody to drop those trees and remove the wood. Up there on that town road, if Greg don't want to do it with his excavator, I'll push him over. Okay. Well, th these are pretty big pine trees. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. Okay. <laughs> can't push them over. They don't need to be cut. Well, I, I think what well what Bud Jones said and in, in, in digging out the area to make it into a a dry parking area it would be trenching a, around the back of the parking area. We would probably destroy the roots of the pine trees enough that I'm absolutely sure he's right. I haven't seen the plans, but yeah, taking them trees down is not a big deal. Not on that road. Okay, right, there's not a lot to hit with them. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. do we know about what the material costs would be like for the gravel and the stone? No. Boy, really. I, I, yeah, I can't remember what he came up with. I, it, his, um, the $8,000 number he was kicking around, that was, that was just the ballpark that he came up with standing there looking at it. Uh, Michael, when, when I spoke to Bud, he indicated that he thought it would be two days worth of excavator work. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know what, it, you know, what does an excavator cost for a day? I don't know, probably $1,500. <laughs> yeah, and then the rest of that would be the materials cost. So three to $5,000 for materials. Mm -hmm. Does that sound believable there, Chuck? Yes, it does. Yeah. So would we want a yeah. article on there for at least that portion of it? Or do you think you can get that um, from the Woodbury Fund? Because I'm def I'm in favor of doing the project. I'd like to see it get done in the spring. Yes. Well, well, we would have to apply to the Woodbury Fund, and and but I have a feeling that we would get funded for it. But that's yep. just a. a I hope that because I, I kind of like the project. Mm -hmm. Yep. So do I. Yep. So do I. And uh, something that's supposed it, to be benefiting the town. Yes. To me, like that, the town should be putting a little bit up front towards it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thank you. So our other um, choice, Mike, is either put that as an article for that, for, for if they can't get it from the, well, I guess, let's try to get it from the Woodbury Fund. I think we'd be supportive of using the town resources to do the work and place the materials. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think the Woodbury Fund would, would, would be supportive of this project. Okay. okay, so so you're saying we don't need any kind of article if we just use the town equipment. Correct. Assuming you can get the funding from the Woodbury Fund, if not, we would have to put an article in for the gravel and stone. Right, right, right. Over Got whatever it. we did. So the Woodbury Fund, oh. uh, fund funding deadlines are like fall and spring. So you yeah. have to, yeah. have right. to consider something in the middle of the term. I don't think we would get an answer from the Woodbury Fund until May. Right. Well, and I'm even okay with doing it and then just getting paid back to us. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, other than the gravel expense, I mean, you've got to pay for the excavator anyway, and the, the guys have got to work the, their hours. So it wouldn't be any different except for the, right. the, the, mm -hmm. the amount of material. And I got an idea when we get up there and get looking around with some drainage, uh, some good drainage pipe, and uh, the materials might even be able to be cut down from where they are. So again, I'd be in favor even if we paid for it up front. You applied for the Woodbury Fund to get the three grand and just pay that back. And I don't know if that would work for for the Woodbury Fund. They they only like to fund projects that aren't being funded by the town. But this one is kind of in between. So yeah, I'm just saying that to keep it moving because I know they would like to get it done before summer. But if it's a wet area, wouldn't it be better to wait until later in the? Summer? Oh, that I don't know anything about. You can't. You can't well, do it. But you could the first. It, yeah, it, it's not like it's extremely wet. It, I I would imagine it could be done in the latter part of May. Yeah, the end of May, first of June. I know what you're talking about. I wouldn't be at all uh, against putting an excavator in there. The end of May. Mm -hmm. Wow, unless we had an exceptional wet season, but, yeah, which we mm -hmm. could. But yeah, we could. We could. <laughs> If it was dry this summer, we'll make up for it next year. Yeah. Uh, that's what they make silk fence for. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it sounds like we have a plan. Yep. And uh, we'll just have to cross our fingers on the Woodbury Fund, I guess. Yep. It's a okay. it, it's yeah. town and, thing and we're it, doing. Yeah. It, and if the Woodbury Fund doesn't work, we'll figure something out. Right. I think it'll get done. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> okay. Right. I'll, I'll I'll let you folks go. Thanks very thank much. You. Okay. All right, thanks, thank Paul. you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. So, um, the next thing that uh, we should probably warn on the uh, town meeting agenda is the uh, expense to repair the town library roof, which um, I got an estimate from Larry Elder of about six or seven thousand dollars. I think I mentioned this before. And then, um, you know, we don't really, the, the roof shingles, especially on the um, east, west side of the, of the uh, library are pretty deteriorated already. So we're, you know, I thought that maybe $10,000 would be a safer figure to ask for in case any of the subsurface needs to be replaced. Um, so I, um, I'm thinking that it, that if we had that it would be good to warn that project um yeah we should because it's found it better to fix the roof than to fix the roof
Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so does that sound like uh, do, now? Do we need to get a petition signed? No, my board can put anything on there we want. Okay. All right. So, um, how do um, Brian and Paul? How do you feel about putting that on the the town warning? Uh, I think we should. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so looks like we've done that. So the, the I put the junk ordinance on again. Uh, you remember we discussed that um, back early in the summer. And now that we're dealing with issues on Ainsworth Road, um, it just seemed like it kind of resurfaced in my brain. Um, I looked, I thought it was on the website for people to make comments on. Uh, so I looked for it on the website and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I don't know if that ever even happened. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, um, I know we wanted to have the junk ordinance on uh, the town meeting warning for people to either to vote to, you know, approve having the ordinance or, or a disapprove of it. Um, so I'm wondering if we, if we want to move ahead on that uh, at all. I, I'd rather see it held until we got some public comment. Okay. The right way to attack this in my mind is to put it out, get public comment, and then I wanted to have a public vote on it, whether we did it at a town meeting or whether we did it at a specially worn town meeting. Okay. Because um, right. being that it affects everybody in town, I think the townspeople ought to have a chance to vote on it. Okay. So, um, just we'll just put... what's that, Chuck? Not being on the board, I agree with that 100%, but I think that you need to get on it and get some yeah. steps and follow through with it when you do it. Right. right. I okay. thought it had already been posted. That's why. <laughs> okay. I, I thought so too, but I didn't see it there anywhere. So uh, Laura, Laura was going to do that back last summer, and I assumed that it was there, and I was hoping to see what there were for comments. Oh, um, here. Yeah. But I, I couldn't find it anywhere. You know, um, when, for an ordinance, I really think that the select board has the authority to adopt an ordinance. I don't think the voters do. And you talked about putting it on the warning for town meeting so that people could discuss it. And of course, we're not gonna be able to discuss anything. This right. year. So I think, we, you know, I don't think people can vote on it, but anyway. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we'll just, I mean, it's pretty much done, um, except, you know, yeah. um, in fact, it was, that was a pretty much a final draft and we were just gonna see what kind of input we got in order to revise it and if depending on what we got for input so i so guess we'll just we do that yeah so what we'll do is we'll get it on the town website and um for sure this time and see what kind of comments we get yeah and we're then talking. and then if we if the select board feels it's necessary to adopt it we could do that in a in a warn meeting and people could come in and join in that discussion then um and here it is on the website it's under forums oh, okay under, under community and then uh, under forums under so that's why you probably couldn't find it okay there are, are 12, there any comments there at all yeah there are 12 12 comments okay all right well i'll i'll, I'll mm -hmm. find those and and take them in here um why don't you put it out Gary clarks to get response from town's people okay okay we could do that too yeah yeah i mean it, it, it seems every time i come up on the facebook there he is or on the the internet there is that that okay we we could oh. put it on front porch forum also put it yeah. on whatever okay all oh, right oh, again i'm on the statutes online it says we must post it in five conspicuous places okay if we're going to consider adopting it for starters yeah, I think there's a certain time frame and um, 14 days. Yeah. Uh, if you put it on the website, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, but that yeah, that happens after, after the board has decided to go ahead with it, and then you have to go through that process. Right. right. But again, I'm just telling you, I'm not comfortable without getting some weigh in. That's what I'm okay. saying. Well, right. I don't blame it. I, I think you should. Yeah. Okay. So, you know how to get it out there so people can weigh in. Yeah, that's correct. So okay. let's get it posted. If uh, um, I all we can study how if we can 
Uh, if, if we have to just do it on our vote, then we just got to go through the process. Okay. Right. Vote on it, and then I can decide how we're going to vote based on how we see public uh, inputs come in. Yeah, exactly. I, I have the information on the process as far as so. Um, I can, so this this reminds me of part of my conversation with the state police this morning. Um, he asked me if the town had a winter parking ban ordinance, and I know we have this winter road policy but I'm pretty sure that we don't have a winter parking ban ordinance. And the reason he asked me that is that in order to be able to enforce something like parking in the road in the winter, um, there needs to be an ordinance for, to be enforced. Um, so there's, but there's also state law. I know Shauna Clifford sent me a whole blurb um, back when we were having issues up in West Woodbury and along County Road. So um, I'm going to try to find those and uh, see what they have, what that has to say too, and that's mostly again addressing the Ainsworth Road problem. Um, but this comes up other places in town uh, during the winter also, um, or has in the past anyway. So okay, so that's we'll we'll get the junk ordinance out to these other um, public forums that we have and um, we'll garner some uh, comments and uh, and then move move from there. Um, sound good? Sounds good. Okay, all right. So um, let's move on to reviewing the uh, fiscal year 2022 um, budget. And then, you know, we, we had a, beginnings of a conversation about the third full-time road crew member at our special select board uh, budget meeting last week. Um, and I'd like us to continue that discussion uh, either at, you know, as we review the budget or when we get to that part of the budget or whenever, but um, try to get a better sense of, of just how we're gonna incorporate that extra expense in the town highway budget, what we might be able to uh, compensate for within the budget. So I'm glad Chuck's here too um, for that discussion too. So um, let me bring that up on the screen. All right, and let's get, um, get us to the beginning here. So Brandy, do you, um, do you want to start from the beginning or where would, where do you think it's best to start from? We covered most of it, hadn't we? Yeah, I had, um, it was. So um, one comment I had, and let me get my paper copy because I was writing on it, but I couldn't write on this one. For the generator, the annual fee, at our last meeting, we voted, um, you know, to take the program one from the Brookfield um, service for the generator uh, to the an expense of a thousand dollars, roughly a thousand dollars, nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars, mm -hmm. exact amount. So I'm wondering if we couldn't drop the two thousand three hundred dollars down to one thousand dollars. That's fine. That's the actual expense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Are there other? So, Go ahead, Brandy. Yes. So I just contacted Suburban, who fills it. Yeah. So they will be filling it um, within the next week. So what mm -hmm. I did was I combined it two oh. item lines into that one. So okay. that's where you get the twenty three hundred. Right. So that's also okay. the pro thing. Okay, we probably better leave it there then. Yeah, we should leave it there. Yeah. Okay. That way it's not staggered. It's under public safety. And it's simple mm -hmm. to find. Yep, one one place. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think we're we're headed to the town highway budget here. Yeah. So um, the bottom line, another... the general budget. Just to finish that up, the bottom yeah. line was up or down, or where well, were we? <laughs> so th this I is. I still a... have some appropriations that. <coughs> okay. So I brought us but to pay. I'm still waiting on some. Go ahead, Brandon. Go ahead. 
right there. So there is a couple. I'm still. Yeah. I'm still waiting on some appropriations. Um, okay. Like for instance, the Hardwick Rescue. Um, I'll get the numbers tomorrow from from Chance and Paul as far as the fire department, and then um, uh, as some as. And there's a few missing. There's less than, than 10 for the appropriations. Yep. Okay, so that's fair enough. So, we, can, we can go like on then. Those, yeah, they're, they're not. But moving on to the highway, I'll let you take over, Michael, if you want. Well, Brenda, I have one other question in the general budget. So I was just looking at the Swenson full reimbursement. And I'm wondering if yeah. in... in fiscal year 20, if that was the total amount that the town received or, or did parts of the fund go elsewhere? And, and this is just a partial payment reimbursement. Probably the, last, probably the last check came after the fiscal year ended. Well, no, this is 20. That's correct. This is 2020. Um, I've got it marked in red on the screen here. I see it. You know, we're, we're anticipating like $35,000 a year from them with a reimbursement. And I'm wondering if in that year, which was basically a year and a half ago, if, that, if we only received the twenty-two thousand, or if some of the other money is elsewhere in the town highway budget. I think that was so. The that, that was a halfway. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. Go ahead, Brandy. So that was a halfway point when we switched back for the the of where it was going to be dispersed. Um, okay. So that's the, the that was the the whole when we were playing around with it just being a automatic transfer right into those funds instead of showing in the Swenson. That's why it wasn't the thirty five. Okay, all right. So that's not or a up, figure to be to concerned that. with. Then. Okay, all right. So let me get us no. to the. All right. So hang on. How do I move this little icon here, here. out of the way of view? Good. Oh. All right, so. Um, do you have highlighted the beaver? You want to reduce it? Or? Yeah, I was thinking that we could reduce it to um, 2,000 instead of, I mean, I, I'm just chipping away at every little thing here. I think we could yep. reduce it to 2,000. Yeah, do you think you can manage with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. If it gets above that, I'll just and the road for the fun of it. And then I know we talked about Chuck's um, compensation. Did and I'm kind of remembering that we settled on ten thousand dollars. Is that true? Yeah, we're budgeting for ten hours a week uh, for the year, so it'd be ten or so thousand dollars. Okay, and he's still working from Florida. So and again, there may be winter times where he's not putting in that ten hours a week. That'll just be a savings. Okay. All right. So well, I, and he hasn't submitted a timesheet since he's been in Florida. Right. I don't, I'm not going to either. I don't, I don't want to be paid while I'm down here. I want to be involved yep. and take care of the problems. But um, unless I'm up there coordinating stuff and getting shit together, I don't want to be paid for it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good yep. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, and so. I'm not saying that I will keep it at 5,000 next year because it looks like I was maybe a little over this year. Right. That's why I thought it was wise to bring it up some. I don't, yeah, yeah I don't believe it'll get to 10,000 though. Do we, want to, eight, eight? do we want to drop that down a little bit then? Yeah, I would drop it to 7,500. Okay. Okay. Is that fair? Sounds fair to me. Yeah. I just want to make sure we can cover the hours that you need to work in the time that you're here. And that's all I want to get paid for is while I'm there. Okay. All right. My telephone doesn't cost me anything and my time doesn't cost me anything down here. So if I can help keep things straight out up there, I want to do it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we'll scroll down. Uh, so, um, the next thing that I, I marked was garage supplies. And I guess, you know, it, again, it's just cutting little pieces off, but um, I know we budgeted it for 1200 every year and, you know, we might get up to close to the 700 in fiscal year uh, tw 20, but I was thinking that 
Where's my other sheet? I have the price, things that I dropped it down to here. Uh, where am I here? No, that ain't right. Okay. Um, so the, the $1,200, I was wondering if we could drop it down to 750. You know, I would think so. We, we spent quite a lot of money on that 550 this year and got it up into shape and we put new lights on it. And we went through everything. The trucks are all in good shape. Um, for garage supplies, I would think we should be able to with no problem. Yeah, you've been averaging about that 750, 720. Yeah, that seems you're to be you're on pace to spend about five hundred dollars this year. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to cut them short, but you know, nope. instead nope. of having twelve sets of wiper blades on hand, they can have four or five. Right. Yep. And then in the workshops and training, you know, we budget five hundred dollars every year. Um, and of course this year. With the pandemic, there wasn't any really trainings at all, um, except for webinars, I guess. But I was thinking that we could drop that down to um, two hundred dollars, or or we could keep it. You know, it's it's not a big difference, but um, just every little bit counts. Right. Well, and the, yeah, and the thing of it is, I'm hoping hope against hope that this new mowing machine we got to cut brush with is going to cut down the need for them to have to go out and learn about chainsaws and putting taps on and all that shit. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, yeah, I think we can do that. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so then the heat for the garage. Um, of course, that always depends on the winter. But, um, you know, two winters ago, uh, or last winter, actually, um, you know, we had budgeted fifty five hundred, and we spent uh, a little over five thousand. Last year, we or this year, we budgeted seven thousand. Um, and so far, it's a mild winter. Um, of course, the next winter could be cold. So, um, but I'm thinking that maybe we we could um, drop it down to fifty five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars. Um, so I'm thinking five to six thousand somewhere in that neighborhood looks okay. Okay. As as of right now, the tank is full and it hasn't been filled since last year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But of course, that's that's this fiscal year that we. That's that we, right. Correct. So and it's and, still early. Yeah. Yeah, it's still early, and who knows what next winter will be like? You never know. Uh, I'm thinking a good number might be six, Michael. Okay. All right. Lost Chuck. You can't hear Chuck. <laughs> can't hear you, Chuck. Uh oh, everybody froze. Well, I'm here. Okay. Oh my. All right. Here are, Chuck. I, I think it was it was my end that froze up, so I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> well, i like I say, I've seen years when when December it stayed twenty below zero. <laughs> Yeah, we've had right. an exceptional year this year. Uh, all you can do is guess on it, but yeah, right. Right. you so, could not get down to thousand dollars probably. Okay, so we'll we'll bring it down to six thousand. Okay. That gives us a little little cushion from what we spent. Yeah, right. yeah. And you know, last winter winter showed up first of November and pretty much lasted last two. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, so we spent five thousand then. So of course we didn't have a lot of below zero weather, but no. I'll let you know in April. Yeah. Uh, so the garage repairs and maintenance, I don't know if the crew has any projects planned for next summer, but I was wondering we if do we could drop the What's that? We got to do some work on the grader. Oh, well, oh I think this one's on building maintenance. Yeah, oh, this is just for the okay. building, the Sorry. garage itself. Sorry. I'm getting ahead, of the, getting ahead of the ball. Right. Um, so I was wondering if we could drop that down to a thousand dollars. What is it now, sir? 
2,500. Yeah, I would think. Okay. Nothing is, do you know, there's nothing really planned for next summer at all or for? Not that I know of, but okay. Greg and I haven't talked about the buildings either. I mean, okay. you put the shed up over the, the fuel pump this year. You done the fuel pump right. last year. Yeah. The heat's in good shape. The building is in fair shape. Okay. Uh, I don't know of anything that we're going to try doing this year. Okay. All right. So what are you going to go down to, Mike? Well, um, I was thinking a thousand, but I'm I'm open for, you know, that's not cut in stone. I think if we anybody else has a different idea, um, I'm fine. I'm with okay it. with a thousand. Yeah, as long as we know during now we don't know of any maintenance needs. So. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll drop it down to a thousand. And that's from thirty four ninety six. Uh, it's from twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, this, right. this year they've only spent three hundred and fifty nine dollars so far since July on building maintenance. Yeah, yeah I, I don't see a lot coming up. I really don't. Okay. Okay. That was probably the shed over the tank. I bet that three hundred fifty nine dollars. Probably. Yeah. And we done a little work. We done a little work to the doors on the salt shed too. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. But so, that um, was minor. The next couple of things that I highlighted was just the gas, which is basically pretty much just gas for the chainsaw, my understanding. Maybe for the, does the hydro seeder have a gas powered motor on it? Yes, so, it does. And so does the uh, pump for the, no, the uh, water pump, right? Chloride. Yes. Okay, the chloride pump. Yeah. So the last couple of years, we, you know, we spent, well, 70, um, last like, fiscal year and, and so a hundred dollars it looks like yeah I think a hundred would cover it oh definitely yeah okay. Okay. you're only spending about a hundred seventy dollars a year it looks like yeah and then for the diesel fuel um, you know that's a tricky one because you never know what yeah. the price will be but um, you know last fiscal year full year in. big pardon Brandy it's We're not, not locked, locked in. in on it. Yeah. Do you think we would be taking a chance if we dropped the thirty-four thousand down to thirty thousand dollars? It's gonna. It, it's all gonna depend on the rest of the winter. Um, well, this this is and, actually next and, winter. Yeah. Yeah, because last the last right. winter we had was pretty hard. We spent twenty-five thousand on fuel. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking that thirty thousand might cover it. Or I wouldn't want any lower than that. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go any lower either. I'm looking at that twenty-five thousand dollars, which was last winter, when oh, yeah. the plows were pretty much busy from November on. Um, and then um, I would think you'd get away with that. Thirty. 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 Everybody else feel okay with that? Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. So. I think that's pretty much okay. Here's so the I had highlighted the hydro seeder and was wondering if there are any plans for work on that. I, uh, there actually is. That's uh, what I thought. Yes, we need to. That's why that price come up was. Yeah. Um, we want to purchase a blower okay. to blow the the seed and the chaff into the hydro seeder. Um, right now, it takes about three hours for them to mix up a tank full, and with a bore, it'd be about fifteen to thirty minutes. Okay, I've, I've oh, seen them breaking up those bricks of yes stuff. Yeah, yes. would grind okay. it up and then blow it in, is what you're saying, Chuck? Yeah. Yeah, you drop the bale right into the bore, and it's got a oh. it breaks it up and blows it right in. And, and and how much is that? Um, I'm working on a price right now. It's looking like it's going to be. Somewhere around twenty five hundred. Okay, so I think that sounds like a, a good expenditure. Yep. Yeah. As far as as far as saving time and yep. getting shit done, it's good. That would it's going to be a good buy because it'll end up saving us some employee hours. It yep. will a lot. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So we'll leave that one alone. Um. So 
the next thing that I highlighted was the sand. Um, obviously, we're going to have to put that out to bid. So, and I guess we probably should anticipate that it might cost more. Um, but I was wondering, you know, that taking that thirty thousand and dropping it down to twenty-eight thousand. Um, and I'm fine with keeping it where it is too, because it is a we we will be getting um you know a new price, and usually when bring it out to bid, it always costs a little bit more. Yeah, that would be prudent. I don't I don't see we're going to be saving money on sand. So yeah, yeah. Well, well, we have a lot of sand left over, Chuck. Yeah, that's where I'm going. The, the, oh, the, okay. They got about a thousand yards. They still got to haul, and they won't do that till spring. Till spring. We, we may have some savings. There could be some savings. It, well, a one-time shot. Uh, um, but how do we predict that? <laughs> well, no. What I'm saying is, is they usually have a thousand yards every year. Oh, that they haven't hauled. If you yeah. right. So if you okay. cut that back to twenty-eight thousand, they'll have four or five loads every year. They don't haul. And then, so I think you could cut a couple grand off of sand and still call be it 20, 25. Uh, what do you get it at now? Uh, 28. I was recommending keeping it at 28. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, yeah. I think 20, oh, from the 30. I see where you're like. Yeah. Yeah. Just you're saying keep it at 28 from the 30. Yeah. I am. Okay. That, that makes sense. You know, I was looking at the wrong number. Uh -huh. There's uh, roughly a thousand yards every year that doesn't get hauled into spring. Okay, you so know? why why pay for it, right? Exactly, right. and just let it set out there. I mean, gravels, they're good people. I think we're all right. of them, but they don't need to operate on our money. Correct. Right. right. Okay, that and, sounds uh, good. And we, you know, we haven't used much sand so far this winter. No, it's been easy so far. We'll get punished in the next month or two. Yeah. yeah we'll well, will. If you don't, you will sooner or later. You'll get it eventually. It all averages out. It it does. Does. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, um I didn't be up the gravel bill a lot. Okay. Um and I didn't yeah. hear you say anything about it. I think I actually, I did have it marked. Let me get back there. Hang on a second. I I did have a comment on that. Um, maybe I didn't highlight it. Yeah. Right there, stop. Yeah. Go back. I get, it's right. Okay. Um, yeah, I just put a question so mark there. we spent 13,000. Yeah. I'm sorry, I only got part of that, Brandy. So far, we've spent thirteen thousand three hundred twenty-one dollars and eighty-one cents, and we budgeted for thirty thousand. Yeah. The year before, we did spend pretty much what we budgeted About for. Thirty. Was, yeah. Well, I, but I'm not sure. Spring hasn't that. hit yet. I don't see it, but there. Well, it's right below. I see this section called road maintenance. Yeah, it's the second yeah. line item down from there. Yeah. I'll bring it right up to the top. Okay, okay. Let me let me bring it up to the oh, top. Oh yeah, yeah, I got it. Now. Yeah. Whoops, too far. You got it. Okay. I do. Okay. So, I mean, I'm fine with keeping it as it is. I did put a question mark beside it. Okay. I know. I know you've Actually, got some roads you wanted to resurface, so I just want to make sure you've got enough gravel to do that. Well, Actually, the reason ahead, I had it. The reason I had a question mark before by it is that uh, in the uh, draft from last time it was thirty-five thousand dollars, and then I noticed that it went back to what it has been the last couple of years. So I didn't highlight. That's why I didn't highlight it. Well, that's why I'm bringing it up. I yeah. thought we were going to be at thirty-five thousand. Okay. okay. You you think that's what you need then? Well, uh, these roads have been run down for ten years. Yes. Yeah. Getting I know, them back. I know you were talking about cat, the Cabot Road resurfacing that, and and we've got the school parking lot also that we've been working on. So well, yeah, the school great. parking lot is not going to be that bad, but there's a lot okay. of places that need a half, three quarters of a mile of resurfacing because we can't keep the potholes out of them. Okay. Okay. 
So we probably should bring that on Chuck's recommendation back up to 35 because I definitely don't want to short materials on the, I know we're behind. Yeah. Okay. I would like to yeah. see that, but I guess we can live with 30 if you really think we need to. Well, I think we're kind of going on your judgment. Then let's move it up to 35. Okay. okay. I agree. All right. We're definitely behind in some areas and need to catch up and you're not going to do that without spending a little money. Exactly. Uh, there's a couple of spots on the county road. We get the county road up where it's pretty good all the way, and there's about a mile and a half and two or three different spots that go right to hell in three or four days. Yeah. And we've got to get them built up and resurfaced. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, I think that's pretty much pretty much it. The, of course, the other unknown, and uh, I don't know, you know, the, the whole school lease thing, um, that's, we're waiting on the, the school board to uh, get back in action so that we can continue that negotiation. Um, they pretty much postponed the last meeting that we would have had. Um, and we, so we're just waiting to hear back from them. And I have a feeling that we probably won't hear anything until after the new year. Okay. So that's, but the idea behind the negotiations is that, that, that there will be no, anything that they want the town to be um, in the, you know, um, viewed as paying for will be what we're going to be asking for them in the lease. That's kind of the way the financial part of those negotiations are going. Um, right. We need to then, cover our expenses in that lease. Yes. Exactly. So, so it should be. A, Will it should I be a, the library? No, the library is is a separate thing from the school. Okay. The library is actually a town building. Yeah, I knew it was, but I wasn't sure if it was incorporated because it seemed like the school used to use it. And I... They they still use it. There's a memorandum of understanding between the uh, school library trustees and the school board that which will be a part of the lease. But as okay. far as any um, and, and part of that understanding is that they do pay the uh, heat, electricity, phone, the different, some of those expenses. Um, okay. And in turn, the library lets them use that annex building and, and actually parts of the library too. That was pre, pre pandemic, of course, right now, it, they are using the, um, that annex building, which was originally built as a, an extra room for the school. They are using that. Um, but not the actual library part. Okay, okay. I just touching base, figuring if we okay. need to put a roof on it, then and then the school was the only one really using it. That it ought to be in that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, technically it's a town building. Yeah, so. okay. And then um, I just want to let the select board know that, um, you know, the way this whole lease thing has been going and how it's kind of bogged down, I am doing some research into um, actually, you know, seeing what the town would be, um, what it would be involved in and actually selling the school to the school board for a dollar. Um, I just wanna find out what the ramifications would be of that if we get really bogged down. Well, well, I, I mean, I mean it may be inevitable with the response we got with our original proposal. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm really worried that, you know, I, for me, the bottom line is I want to keep the school as a school for the, for the children in Woodbury. Um, and if this whole money thing gets, you know, just gets bogged down, we can't come to an agreement. I'd like to have, just know what the other option might be to actually just sell the school to the district, you know, for a dollar. Um, um, well, and also the secondary issue of any offsets that they push toward the town, we end up getting double tax for because exactly. we would have to pick up an expense and we're still going to be paying the same expense through the school tax, which is not okay with me. So the only remedy to that is to not own the building. Right. That's, that's not okay with me either. You know, I, we've already paid our school taxes Correct. and we aren't going to pay any more. Um, 
So, so, so if we can't is, negotiate a lease that fully covers all the expenses, including contingencies, we got to look at other alternatives. Yeah. So I I want to I want to explore that alternative. I'm going to yep. be calling the Department of Ed and and getting the information that I need for that. I just wanted to let you know that that I'm I'll actually start doing that probably tomorrow. Okay. I'm trying to get a hold of anybody over, you know, the yeah, week with COVID, Christmas. nobody's at work. Well, between COVID and the holidays, for right. <laughs> Nobody's at work. No, so, um, but I'm gonna start looking into that. Um, yes, Diana. Are you finished? Did you finish with the highway department? Well, I'm kind of not paying no. attention. My question is where, uh, or how much are you putting into her? I mean, I uh, see where the- It was 56,000, something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we budget $90,000 and then whatever we are paying for, um, Equipment. So if, you, if you scroll down to the truck payments, it would be 90 minus the two payments that we have. Scroll so, down to where? Uh, Mike, could wherever we, the trucks were. You okay, got to go back up, that. Mike. Hang on. I'll get us back there. I sort of glanced at it. We didn't talk about it. Right. Um, right there. Equipment. So we have payments of... 6,983 and 26,392. Mm -hmm. So it would be 90 minus the sum of that number would give you the transfer that we should be making to the HERF, which is 56. Oh, I see that now. 56,623 yeah. would be added to the HERF fund. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. We, would, we would be able to reduce our total investment on trucks once those payments are made. We don't need to put 90 a year into that HERF fund. It'd be more like 60 or 65, you know. Right. Well, after you buy the first truck. Correct, correct. Because right now we're spending a lot more than we, we need to just to get caught up. Yes, you well, are. So it's actually going to be the 56, 623 minus the 26 and minus the. No, no, it's the, no, no. That's how we derived the 56, uh, 623 was we started at 90 and then subtracted the two payments. Oh, okay, all right. And then um, I think we go to the bottom here. The HER fund is there. It'll be a transfer out. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, there's so also that, the four, 14 or whatever that's coming out from the Swenson. Yeah. Right, which also goes into the HERF. Yep. Yeah, that's that's in this transfers out um, here. Right. I did find that. At 55%. Her fund, um, that's coming from the Swenson reimbursement payment. So that's roughly $14,000 a year. On top of the 50 cents? Yes. Cool. And, and we have $40,000. Right, so we're putting over 70,000 in the HER next year. Yep. Good. Because we've got to get to where we can buy the next truck that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Yep. And we'll be spending $40,000 um, from the HERF fund, which we, which is about what we have right at the moment um, for that um, chipper more. Correct. Yeah. So, so, so that, that piece of equipment is not shown in this budget at all. It's just coming straight out of the- It'll come out of the HERF. Yeah. But we may need to, we need to show that somewhere, Michael, don't we? I think we should, yeah. So I'll be creating, I'll be creating an item line just below um, the equipment as far as the lease and it um, it's for when we go to purchase it. Okay. Um, okay. Because I think so, that purchase is actually going to happen in this fiscal year, not next fiscal year. It will. It yeah. actually happen. It'll show up next year. Yep. Yeah. It, it should be, be this the end fiscal year. June. Yeah. Because you were, you were thinking April so or May. Once should, I take the end of April, the end, towards the end of April or in the month of May, it'll definitely be here in May. It'll be in this fiscal year. Yes. Yeah. And then Brandy can just so show it as an Brandy? Sorry, I need to so whatever's so whatever is left over after that payment out of that 56 will get transferred over to the HERF. But okay. my only concern is is that how close we are for expenditures now in the highway that we're gonna have a deficit that we're gonna have to budget for to make up for, for next year's. Uh -oh. Okay. <clears throat> so 
So somewhere there's going to be a report of how much is in the HERF now. But that's not in here, right? There is. Yep. If you go to the last page, there's the okay. do to, do from, yeah. and you'll see a balance. Okay. Let, let me get us there. That's only 48000 Whoa. Well, so wouldn't it make more sense to spend the money for the um i'm not i'm not transferring the money until i pay that equipment out of the highway you, fund you want to pay for it out of what we were going to train okay i see what you're doing that, that works too yep. mm -hmm. yeah that'll work you just would reduce the the uh, uh what you're putting in that's fine yeah. has the same effect mm -hmm. thank you So, um, so can I ask a question? Real sure. Quick? Yeah. As, as far as that 10,000 for the library, where for the roof, where are you looking at, at putting that in the budget? Somewhere in the are general you looking at putting it underneath the, yeah. the building um, and maintenance. Yeah. Um, well, you're also, that's going to be an article approved by the voters, too. It's really not our discretion. Yeah, but it still has to be shown. It's got to be shown. Or wouldn't we show it up under uh, all the other ones we've got under the town meeting vote requests? I had a spot here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so I had it, um, Brandy, I had it in the general budget under buildings and grounds. Okay. Yes, that's right. where I was planning on putting it. Yeah. Yep. Underneath, well, I'll I'll put it. End up putting it into repairs and maintenance, um, and just add a, a sixty nine point oh three. Okay. So, um, you're sure you? I guess it still needs an article. What's that, Diana? You don't want to just even though it's in the. Sorry, Brandy, go ahead. <laughs> We can put it in the budget, but it still needs to be an article. Well, it doesn't have to if they just decide that it needs to be paid. Well, that's our other option is just to say it needs doing and put it in the budget. Uh -huh. Couldn't do it until FY22. Wouldn't happen until after July 1st. Right. Either way, I, it wouldn't. Yeah, either way, it wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's one of those things that has to be done. I don't. <laughs> right. I, 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 I'm fine either way. I mean, I, I guess it would be a little strange to put it as a warrant item and then have it voted down and then the select board has to have the roof fixed because it's leaking. Right. Yeah, to do it afterwards. Right. That'd be a little weird. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know where Brian's at, but I, I'd lean toward just budgeting for it and doing it. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's good. I feel the same way Michael does. If it roof starts to leak and it's been put shot down, what do we do? We get a tarp? I, I... Yeah, we just right. got to do it. Yeah. You know, and that brings up another thought that we discussed a little bit um, is starting to to budget a little bit of money to go into that building fund, that we, the town building fund that we have been taking little bits from the last few years. At some point, maybe not this year, but um, at some point we need to be putting a small amount into that uh, building fund for town buildings, right? But that would be town under building, general, right? Yeah. yeah. There's about eight thousand dollars in there now. Yeah. And that we'll probably use a lot of that up painting the town hall, correct? Well, you budgeted for that. No. We did. Okay. So if well, you if you go to the last page, the do to do from. So, I don't think I is that in the worksheet. Yeah. Oh no no no! It's on your. No, it's, it's on our financial pages statement. and our financial <laughs> statements. Okay, I'm on my do to do from. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get right. rid of. Are we all done with 7, this? Seventy nine hundred. Well, we haven't addressed the third road person okay, yet. All right, so let's keep it there. All right. And I got one other thing I want to talk about too before we probably okay. even go to that. Okay, but go ahead, go ahead, Brandy. So I was just making a point that the the, the um. The town building fund is a fund of its own, and yes. it's there's seventy nine seven thousand nine hundred sixty four dollars and ninety one cents in it currently, mm -hmm. and and nothing is budgeted or to come out of it. It's okay. it's just sitting there. And we already budgeted for the painting. Yes. Okay. 
which I again we could we could choose to take that out of the that fund if we chose to, but we can leave that to, for a decision to make in the future. Yep. Have we also budgeted for the uh, line from the town office into the septic system? That project? I don't think so. And that, yes. that definitely will have to come out of that. Yeah. yeah. That can come out of that fund. Yeah. You budgeted okay. $2,400 for we did budget for it already. Oh, okay. So it's okay. been budgeted. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. So my thoughts on that fund, Michael, is once we have the final number for the general, we could see if we want to make a contribution to that fund. Okay. You know, if there's any room, if there's not, then we won't. Or okay. use some of it for one of these projects. Or use some of it to offset having to raise taxes because it's about, you know, it's, it's about a cent on the tax rate for every twelve thousand dollars we spend. So if we cut some of that, we'd cut some cents off the tax rate. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Chuck, did you have something that you wanted to discuss? Uh, the only thing that I'd like to bring up is that I'm wholeheartedly going to push to blacktop under the high drive up on uh, oh. Tibbetts Hill. Okay. okay. To do what? Um, the town will take, we can do all the work, getting the final grade and all that stuff, but we're going to need some pavement. Okay. To pave under the high drive. We do have money in the paving fund. I we think do. It's about $12,000. It'll be less than that. Uh, yeah. We'll be making a transfer from the Swenson fund too when that comes right. next year. Too. Okay, we'll be adding to that. Okay, well, it's looking like it's going to be around 9,000. Okay. okay. All right. And that's perfectly legitimate. Just bring us a proposal in the springtime and we'll look at it. I'm working on it now. I yep. should have it within a week or two. Yep. Okay. Um, we got to change that culvert up there and get that road down where it belongs and, and get mm -hmm. the drainage proper and then get the road fixed yes and be done with it and okay. quit, quit uh, hitting the high drive with town trucks because exactly. the idea is then, then you don't it won't build up and you'll be able to salt it and ice won't build up and well it's all ledge under it anyway yeah there's no way it's going to move and we've right. got it that we can put the low pro under it and not have to have ron langevin come in and clean things up and got it they can plow through there they ain't going to go around to go to log town they can go over there back over the hill. Perfect. It's a win-win situation all the way around. Okay, great. Okay. Good okay. project. All right, yep. thank you. So are, are we ready to discuss the third full-time group crew member? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm kind of at a loss where to begin, so Paul or Brian, if you have well, some my, my simple math would be, what are we currently spending for the two part-time people? Well, let me start with, with Chuck. What are his thoughts on this as the commissioner? Do you think it's a needed? If there's going to be two part-time people there, I think it needs to be a full-time one. Okay, we're spending quite a bit of money on the two, it's correct. We are, and you're not getting... You're not getting your bang for the buck because by the time they take turns getting there in the morning, it's 8.30, 8, 8.30 before they get out of the garage because they have to stop and talk things over, which I understand. But if you had the same three people coming there every day, they would know where they left off. And they would know where they were headed. And now there's a problem with direction over there anyway. This is just adding to it. Right. So here I've got up on the screen the amount that um, that Peter and Tim um, were paid last year, not this year that we're in right now, but last year. Um, Twenty two thousand for Peter. Pretty close to the same for Tim. So it's basically twenty two thousand for each. We're spending about forty four thousand um, right now. Yes. And we're actually over budget. We're headed over budget this year, it looks like. Yeah, and, and we were over you, budget, over what do you budget pay last year, too. Greg what Adams. About that? He's, great, that's about what you're paying Greg in wages, right? Yep. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, benefit. Yeah, Brandy sent out a notice that said, uh, when you, because you got to add in benefits, which are usually another 20 or 30%, which is about 
a full-time employee estimating because there are a lot of variables is around 65,000 ish to add an employee. Because of line tax. item in. Um, no, I, I don't know what you're paying these guys per hour. Um, what are you paying the, the two part-time per hour? Um, I don't have that. Excuse me? Around $19 an hour. Um, Brandy knows exactly, but one, I think Tim, yep. Tim makes a little bit more than Peter does. Um, I think Peter is maybe nineteen forty-five an hour. And Tim is... No. Um, Tim well, is seventeen seventy. Okay. Roughly seventeen seventy, and Peter is like sixteen ninety five. Okay. Okay. And they so. get the benefits. They. We lost Brandy. Oh. No, I was waiting for Chuck. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. So my thought is. If somebody's starting out like that with the benefits that the town pays that you folks are paying the benefits that I'm thinking you ought to start somebody around 1550 with full benefits. That's about what the state of Vermont starting somebody at. Yeah. So, you know, you take, well, you got, uh, say an average of a dollar 50 between the two of them to take off the wages to get them started at 1550 plus their benefits, you know, this that's pretty good money for the town of Woodbury to be shucking out. Right. And, and this was a guesstimate, Chuck, too, because you might get somebody who's experienced that might have 15 years. Exactly. you got to pay them 20-something. So that's kind of why we kind of threw it in the middle of the road. Yeah. Might save, might pay more. And, and it <laughs> might, might be an employee that, like Greg Parker's to – um, basically is, um, you know, under his wife's insurance. So the insurance exactly would be less. Exactly. So this 65 is kind of a placeholder to give you a bow. It's going to be a bow, you know, because you never really know to you actually hire somebody. Exactly. And, but with the wages you're paying, the two part-time is 44000 Do they get any benefits? Yes. They get days, right? They, they get some vacation time and, um, you know, sick time, but uh, no insurance at all. It's probably a little more than the 44, because if you add in their, their other benefits, it's going to add a few right. thousand, I'm guessing. So yeah. we may be approaching yeah. that 48 to 50 mark somewhere. Yeah. Probably 50,000. And you're thinking it's going to be 65? Yeah. To have Just for employee? Yeah. That's about what Brandy figured for us, yeah. If they end up taking the full the the health insurance is the is the big one. Yeah. So here you can and see where my dental um, vision. Yeah, which is all right here. Right. You can see how the health insurance would jump up. Right. So part of this discussion, Chuck, would be functionally. Would it be? one of the benefits you have of having the multiple staff, which never was our intention, um, is that if one of those or two of those guys are out, you've still got another guy. One of the things we'd have to deal with is only one staff person could go on vacation at any given time, you know, you know, as long as functionally that works. Well, um, with three people, I can't believe that they couldn't figure out when they were going to take well, I, I agree with you, but yeah, absolutely. It just and, it is one of those you know, things. You brought up to them that you know what? Everybody's got to have a chance at the at the same time off, and whoever. I mean, Greg. I know he takes a month of November off, but you know, if somebody else wanted the first week of deer season off and he's going to get the last three, he might yeah, have to. Do you may have to bid for it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You may yep. have to start going fishing in the summer a little bit too. Exactly. I'll take I'll take him with my pontoon boat. We'll go fishing. He'll have him up a week. Yeah. <laughs> but so that was the only downside I could think of. It's a little less flexible, but if the if that's manageable, then that's it's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Greg and I talked about this fairly extensively before I left and before he went on vacation, and we've talked about it since. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he said it would be no problem doing it with three people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With, now he's advocated for three full-time people right. for, for a few years now. So um Yeah. But it probably would mean that he wouldn't be taking the month of November off. Um, right, because you may have someone else that wants some deer season off. So that's some of the sacrifices to be made. Right. Or, and then just well, every being town like, has to deal with that in November. Yeah. 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 Yes. And yeah. Life's, about, life's about sacrifices every day. You got it. I mean, I'd like to think that everything was going to go right and perfect for me all the time, but yeah. but it never does. <laughs> So this to me is a bottom line kind of thing. I, I We need to see where are we at. If we put this in the budget, where are we at on the bottom line? Do we, have we got that number up or has Brandy kept up with us or we got to kind of wait to see what that looks like? I, I think she's sort of factored it in here. It looks like to me. But we just did some savings. I'm just wondering, we were at about a $20,000 difference prior to the meeting. So the question was, did, did this budget we're looking at contemplate removing the two part-time and adding the one full-time is that what we're hearing yeah i never budget i didn't budget for tim or peter i just put in a, a third time full okay and so then we've recreated some savings uh in our deliberations here what does that final number look like did you catch keep up with us no, because I can only hold the Zoom. I can't go on to the. Oh, you can't be live. Okay. Right. And she, yeah, yeah, she can't make changes in the. Okay, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so prior to our our savings, we were at about a four percent increase in the highway budget with with using the uh, third employee, and I'm assuming we cut that down a little bit. It's it's yeah, within. Can't... The smell test in my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we need to keep moving forward and get our numbers crunched a little bit tighter. But I think it's going to be a better thing in the end. Yeah, I think I think if we can keep that budget increase in the two to three percent range, which we're pretty damn close to right now. Yeah. I think it's manageable and it makes sense if if uh, that's what the commissioner and the highway foreman thinks what we need to do. You are going to make that an open. Uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna send that out for employees, right? Yes. It, well, I've oh, got yeah. some other. It's a different for a different time. We need to have a conversation about my thoughts on how we go forward with it. Um, yeah. But yeah, in my mind, it's got to be. We got to. I, I think we need some blood in there, and, and I got a lot of thoughts on what to do. But different time. We don't need to have that conversation tonight. Okay. No, but yeah, when we, we do, do it, it'd be a long one because I got a lot of thoughts still. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And it's worth having the conversation because we have yeah. some dysfunction that needs to be fixed. And yeah. I have some ideas, as you probably do, on how to how to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess we're in agreement that I'm going to be doing something next summer. So now I've been in there long enough. So yep. I can start making the changes. And this year it was more. Getting, getting your feet under you. <laughs> Exactly, and getting the guys on the same page so that we could at least work together. Mm -hmm. yep. So, so again, I, I think what I don't know when we have to fully make this decision. I just want to see the final numbers. So, if we can get the budget worked out and sent to us of where we are money wise, you get what yeah, I'm saying? I can, yep, I can send that to everybody tomorrow. Okay, or, good. As soon but, as I get off, I can I can get right on and email. Okay. to everybody what the new numbers are going to be because it's not a shocking number when you look in. at what we're already spending right 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 and we did cut like you said we cut some so we cut it, some so it may come out where it ain't all that bad yep. and so i'll go i'll go into the general fund and plug in numbers for appropriations that are missing um, just so we have a, a, a ballpark number in the general fund also. Right. Because our next meeting's on the 11th. Is that adequate uh, to approve these two budgets and vote on this position at that time? I guess we wouldn't be voting. If we approve the budget, we're approving the position. That's kind of where we're at. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm in favor of leaving it in there for now and let's see where the numbers go and, and yep. uh, we'll vote on these, the general and the highway on the 11th, as long as that's uh, uh, soon enough, or do we have to have a 
special meeting. But let's, did Diana, do you have any thoughts on yeah, that? That's okay. That's, that's okay? okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like we're good. As long as you get the selectmen's report in earlier than that, that would be good. But I'll have my case report uh, next week. <laughs> okay, so with the select board report, Brian and Paul, if you have any thoughts on what you would like to see in there, uh, send me an email. I usually am the one that gets to compose okay. that. Yeah, I'm really slow. I spent all day to type two pages with my my three fingers that I have that work. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I usually do that, but Ugh. it helps. Give me, you know, whatever you want to see in there, let me know and I'll okay. get it in there. Okay. And uh, Chuck, I often will write um, a kind of a town highway report too. So um, any thoughts that you might have? I, I don't think, I don't think I got to it last year. I don't think it happened last year. Um, okay. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll try to get that done too. All right. So, if you have some thoughts, I usually just kind of go through and hit some of the highlights about some of the projects that were done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We've done a tremendous amount of ditching, a tremendous amount of culverts this year. And yeah. We certainly did. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. And it was noticed. I mean, I heard a lot of good comments on the roads, and I was very happy with the road conditions in November. So yep. it yep. paid off. It was not a it was not a waste of money what we did. No. No, it wasn't. No, not at all. And if we can have another year and have the productivity we had this year, we'll be things are going to start coming around. Things are going to right. Be I mean, we've we've spent some money, we're buying some stuff, and that's sometimes what it takes to get done what you got to get done. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. it, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate your it, the the board's cooperation. Yeah. You've been very good to work with. We're on the same team. Right. Yep. So. Are we done for the night, do you think? I I am. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. How about uh, Diana, Brandy? Yeah, we're good. Chuck, we're, we're good? good. Do I hear? Yeah, okay. Do I hear a motion? Oh. Sure. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're done. <laughs>